So this is the story <clears throat> about how God saved my life when I was a kid. A man had called my house when my mother wasn't there. I used to live with my mother. Uh, it was just her and me for some reason. I don't know where my little sister was at that time, but I was like 12. And my mom, uh, she used to be a, <clears throat> a prison guard. And um, she was big, of course, on safety with me and my little sister. <clears throat> So, I always knew not to answer the door when I was home alone, but she never said anything about not answering the phone. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, this was way back in the day, okay? This was way back in the day. <clears throat> so, malls, the way we know them today, the big shopping malls, they didn't, this was before they existed, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they had built the first big shopping mall uh, in, um, where was it? Uh, we were living in Woodbridge, Virginia at the time. So they had just built the first you know, big old mall with all the shops. You know how malls are nowadays. They weren't like that before. You know, they you would have strip malls where, you know, it's all the stores like on the street parking out in front. You know how a strip mall is. It wasn't like just the great big old mall. You go inside, there's a food court, da da da, da. That didn't exist. So they built the first one in Woodbridge, Virginia or near Woodbridge, Virginia. And my mom and her best friend went were um they went to the mall now they just left now this is two women going to a shopping mall and this is the first time they've ever been to a major shopping mall so you know that's gonna take some time right so they just left literally they had just left and the phone rings I answer the phone, hello, and there's a man on the other line. He's like, hi, this is Brad from Windows America. Uh, may I speak to your father, please? And I was like, he doesn't live here. And then he's like, oh, um, well, can I speak to your mother? She's not here, she just left to go shopping. He's like, oh, really? Well, um, are you there by yourself? And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, um, wouldn't your mom love it if she came home and had all brand new windows? Now, my mom was real handy. Like, she would do her own oil changes. Sometimes, she, like, she would do part tune-up type stuff, you know what I mean? Um, she was handy around the house. She was a real do-it-herself type of person. She had the temperament of a rattlesnake, to tell you the truth. So I'm quite sure she was good at doing everything herself because wasn't nobody coming around to do nothing for her. They might get bit, okay? So, <clears throat> but, you know, this was like right up her alley, improvements on the house you know and i'm a kid I, I was very naive and so he's like you know wouldn't your mom love it if she comes home and has all brand new windows so i'm like yeah that would be great and he was like well listen tell me your address and then when your mom gets home we'll have a big surprise waiting for her I gave him our address. I gave him our address. 
He came straight over. It wasn't even 10 minutes. He came straight over. It was a knock on the door. <clears throat> now, I'm waiting for him. I done invited the man over. I'm thinking we're going to have this great, big, beautiful surprise waiting for my mom when she gets home. So he knocks on the door <clears throat> and we had a front door and then we had a, a screen door, you know, one of them plexiglass and <clears throat> screen or whatever at the top. We have a screen door and a front door. So I opened the front door and there is a tall white man <clears throat> in a brown and like beige tweed suit brown wavy hair it it was you know came to like right here but it was you know one of them real pretty like finger wave type of curl patterns his hair and um i was opening the screen door as I opened the screen door my mother comes flying back around the corner into the driveway so fast I did not even see like how she pulled and then she was out the car she was out the car and around the car and coming for this man so fast it happened so fast like my eyes couldn't comprehend you know how fast this whole thing was going this man saw my mother and we had six foot hedges around the front of our house our neighbors had like uh three or four foot hedges and that was between our houses but in front of our house there was six foot um like tall tall uh bush type trees i guess they were trees but um they were over six feet and they were like very close to each other so you know you couldn't see through them you couldn't just see right to our house or whatever and then there was the driveway so my mother just came out the driveway do you know that big white man <laughs> that that white man ran through those hedges <laughs> busted through those edges and got up out of there okay and he's lucky he did because my mom was always carrying <clears throat> she was always carrying well when she was a prison guard she was always carrying a, she, they probably uh took away her right to carry a gun and and that that might be where the uh her shooting the, the guy with the crossbow three times that that might be where the crossbow came Hey, from if you haven't heard that story there's a, a, you know what about other videos talk about how my mother should have been in the mafioso so check that video out but that might have been where the crossbow came from because she did she always carried a gun on her um and so anyway he's lucky that he did get out of there because with his life because he was about to she was gonna send him to jesus okay and so um yeah she got home she got home just in time to save my life so no matter how much of a hell your my mom was she did that she did that so <clears throat> years later like she uh Years later, I got it that she saved my life that day. That man, I don't know if he was going to kidnap me. I don't know if he was going to rape me. I don't know if he was going to rape me and kill me. I don't know if he was just going to kill me. But the reason that I don't know what he was going to do and I'll never know what he was going to do. Thank you, Jesus. It's because my mom came home just in the nick of time. So 
years later, I asked my mom, I was like, <clears throat> mom, you know, you saved my life that day. Remember that day that uh, you came home and I was letting that man in the house that, and, uh, and she was like, yeah. And I, I was like, what, what made you come home that day? And she said, I was at the gas station. We had stopped to get some gas on the way to the mall. I was at the gas station and I heard a voice that said, go home now. God spoke to my mother. God spoke to my mother. No matter how much of a hellion she was, no matter how much she manipulated people, no matter how much she hurt people, no matter all the the scandalous things that my mom did. He spoke to her and he and she heard him and she saved my life because she listened to that voice when it said go home now. Yeah, that's that's a crazy story, right? <laughs> I got more for you. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button. I'm telling you, I got crazy, crazy stories. I It is so amazing that I am still alive because plenty of times in my life, I was like, and danger was like right there. And... Oh, I'm still here. I'm still here. That's so crazy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to link some other videos to some other crazy stories um, at the end of this video. So please feast your eyes and ears on the crazy tales spun by this silly, crazy woman. <laughs> and enjoy, enjoy yourself. Because guess what? I'm still here to laugh about it, okay? And no matter all the crazy stuff that has happened in my life, I am still here and I can laugh about it now because I'm so over it. I am over it. Thank you, God. Um... Also, I used to be gay and God delivered me from homosexuality and I wrote a book called Bedroom Secrets of, the, of an Ex-Lesbian and it's an audio book and it's for people that don't have a lot of confidence in the bedroom. This is like the ABCs and one, two, threes of how to easily manipulate that wonderful orgasm out of the female body, okay? So if you ha are wanting to try some new techniques or, you know, see if you already know what I know, um, or, you know, sometimes you can get performance anxiety. It's it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, you can, it's kind of stressful, you know, to think about be, being intimate with a woman and maybe it's your first time or, you know, you don't have much experience or you really want to impress her, you know what I mean? Like you really want to put it down, you know? So, um, and that can, that can make you real anxious and it can make you real nervous and all that kind of stuff, you know, and you don't want to be like that. You don't want to bring nervous energy to the bedroom. You want to bring that, you know, got about the wow your mind girl energy to the bedroom you know so um yeah i give step-by-step -step instructions on how to deliver well i used to give all my girlfriends 10 orgasms in under an hour so i tell you exactly how i used to do that and it's very easy and it's it's easy for me to explain because i'm a woman i have all those parts so I know how to manipulate those parts, you know, and then I used to make love to women. So of course I know how to manipulate those parts because um, I made sure to be extremely good at making love to a woman. There's a lot of gay women out there having sex and their sex is trash. I ain't say that, y'all didn't hear that for me. Yes, I did, I said it. <laughs> but you know, it's a lot of men out there that's having sex and their sex is trash. And they run around talking about, I done had sex with a hundred women or 200 women or whatever like that. You know what? A mechanic can work on 200 cars. But if none of those cars are actually fixed, 
he's a crappy mechanic, okay? So you can have sex with a whole bunch of women and still be crappy in bed and you blow, tooting your own horn. How many women are tooting your horn? Mm, only you know that. Don't squirm too much. Won't nobody know. <laughs> But go ahead and check out Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. You know, um, it's, a, it's a good listen. You'll definitely like it. You won't waste your money. And subscribe to the channel. What else? Y'all be blessed. Okay? Y'all be blessed. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day, night, morning, whatever time of day it is for you. And thank you so much because you stuck around all the way to the end. I can't believe you listened to my crazy stories all this time. So it's my pleasure if I made you smile.